up everybody how are you all doing and i think is the chat overlay working something's disappeared something's disconnected i can't see anything everything's going wrong already <laughs> what's up how you doing what's up john how you doing today good to have you all here and i'm just actually just going to drop into the linkedin stream quickly just to see Oh yeah, you guys can see, but I can't see the um, the the chats just disappeared for me. But that's fine. I can kind of see it in another window, so so we're all good. Yeah. How are we all doing today? We'll do our usual start off with uh, you know the the ask me anything a little bit, and then we've got a nice box uh, set up for today. So. I've briefly looked at it. I did a little bit of scanning and a little bit of poking around, but I'm not sure. I didn't make much progress, so I'm not sure if we'll be able to to complete it today. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. You guys can help me out, and uh, and it's all good. So uh, I think I saw a question earlier up. So if I just scroll up and... Oh, it's already gone disappeared. Maybe the chat's too long. 
think it's about a VAPT role. Oh, yeah. What kind of questions will your interview ask me at VAPT role? So I assume you mean uh, vulnerability analyst penetration testing role. Um, but I suspect you'll get asked things like, um, you know, what's the objective of testing? What's the difference between vulnerability assessments and penetration testing? Uh, you might be asked about common techniques. You might be asked a little bit about like uh, uh, scanning safely. So if you're doing like vulnerability assessments, um, you know, how, what's the difference between unauthorized scans and unauthorized scans? Um, how do you not lock out accounts, especially on like, you know, databases when you're scanning them? So I think things like that, but there's probably some good uh, GitHub repositories kicking around somewhere that'll, that'll give you a nice, uh, a nice list, but hopefully that kind of gets you started in terms of um, at least those are the things that I would ask, you know, if I was recruiting for for this role. So, um, what is the difference between FFUF and WFUS? I mean, not a whole lot to be honest. They both kind of do the same thing. <laughs> They're just built by different people, right? And um, I'm not sure. I think FFUF is a little faster. But don't quote me on that. It might not be. Um, yeah, just personal preference, really. I can't think of like a good reason to use one over the other, apart from general preference. I don't know of any features that one does and the other doesn't. But generally speaking, I just use FFUF because that's what I've been using for a while. And um, I heard Ferox Buster is good, but I'm yet to switch. I did test it out a little bit, but I still need to. Um, spend a bit more time with it. Uh, so uh, is it possible to switch from support role to pen testing? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, study up, make sure you have the right knowledge and, and skills. And then, uh, you know, if you can do a certification, that, that really helps. And then you should be, uh, should be good to go. But I think uh, support roles are definitely like a good start uh, for uh, for pen testing, it's a good introduction. So, um, what else do we have? Do, 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 do. Oh, what is this? Uh, Hack the Box Hackers Bootcamp. I haven't seen this actually. That sounds like fun though. Um, guided mode on older machines. I mean, to be fair, you don't need guided mode on older machines. You just need to watch IPSEC videos because he's done a walkthrough for like every machine for the last five years. So, uh, well, since the very beginning. So uh, I'm not sure what the benefit is, unless it's like, you know, if you can, if it's live and you can ask questions and things like that. But if it's just a webinar, it's kind of like, well, just watch IPSEC videos. But if it's like, you know, a proper class where you can ask questions and explore different uh, different ways of doing things, then that's, that's awesome. I wonder, uh, it says it's free, so I suspect it would be quite busy in there. So I don't know how many questions you'll get answered, but um, am I still mad at Twitch for banning multi-stream? I don't know, to be fair, Twitch had banned multi-stream for a long time. It's just now they're like properly enforcing it. So, you know, we've been multi-streaming like, I mean, for years for like affiliates and partners, even for like the last three, four years, you, you're not meant to have been multi-streaming, so. Yeah, Twitch is going down the pan a little bit, unfortunately, um, with uh, with all their changes. All of the uh, like the big streamers are all moving to Kick and whatnot. So, um, ooh, when is <laughs> good question? When is TCM Security releasing the new web app pen testing set? I'm I'm working day and night. I promise. Um, I suspect you're gonna have to wait at least a couple more months, um, but it will be it'll be this year for sure. Um, and it will be uh, quite soon, I think. It won't be too long. So, yeah. Um, what's up, Yusuf? Always good to have you in the chat. How are you doing? Um, what advice would I give for LinkedIn profile? Um, I think for LinkedIn, for me, like when I look at LinkedIn profiles, I just like things to be clear. I just want to see like, you know, what certifications people have, what their experience is. And then, you know, maybe some headline, which kind of gives away what, what they, you know, are like really interested in. So if you're going for pen test roles or if you're going for like forensics roles, you know, have something specific in your title. And for me, that's that's great. Um, 
maybe if Joe is on screen at some uh, on screen on stream at some point, he can answer more because he's like really experienced in recruiting. But uh, but I think that's the main thing. Make it clear, I think, and use bullet points. Paragraphs. Nobody reads paragraphs <laughs> like ever. So I think that's um, LinkedIn has a new AI thing as well, which uh, which would be interesting to um, to check out at some points for sure. Um, for starting bug bounty hunting, what do I need to learn? Uh, honestly, I would watch some of the recon videos from like uh, Nahamsak and Jason Haddocks. Learn about some basic vulnerabilities. So, you know, you should be able to understand access, SQL injection, um, access control issues. So, like, how to set, update one account and, you know, change the ID and have it try and update a different account and have a general kind of idea of how web applications work. I think if you have that, then, you know, you're good to go. I wouldn't do like, you know, 100% bug bounty to begin with. I'd do like 60 40. So spend like 40% of your time doing bug bounty and 60% of your time studying. And then as you get more experienced, maybe like that, um, uh, that will shift. So then you're doing like 80% bug bounty and 20% study, for example. But you never, I mean, never stop studying, but it shouldn't take over your life, if that makes sense. So hopefully that makes sense. I've got a bug bounty video coming out next week. So um, keep an eye out for that. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, FFUF will work better than WFuzz. I mean, I've never had a problem with WFuzz in particular. I've used it from time to time, but um, I think FFUF is just a slightly cleaner tool. That's so, yeah, maybe all oh, good. Um, do, 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 if I keep scrolling down. Oh yeah, if you if you finish Port Swigger Academy and you've done the back and front ends, yeah, I mean go for it. You you definitely have more than enough knowledge to um to be diving into uh, vulnerability disclosure programs for sure. So I mean if you've completed everything in Port Swigger, then fair play to you. Um, I would definitely like I would look up to things up to the practitioner level. I don't think you necessarily need to go into the expert stuff, um, at least not to begin with. So um, so yeah, it should be it should be all good. Um, doo, 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 doo. Oh, nice. You've got 22 years as a software developer. That's like some really awesome experience. Um, honestly, just like I say to most people, if you can get one certification on your on your CV, that, that really helps because that kind of gets you past HR and into the interview. And then obviously, if you can lean on your uh, technical experience during the interview, then that's really going to help. So try and get you know at least one certification. Maybe um, get a look, get some hands-on practice on like try hack me or hack the box, um, so that you know when they ask you about your methodology or situations, you've already had like exposure to that and you kind of know how you would react. And then you know you should be good to go. I think like heavy experience in dev work is like really, really sought after for sure, especially in web app pen testing uh, and application security engineering roles and, and things like this. So um, how can I know if I'm ready for PMPT or PJPT? I mean, if you've done the course material, um, taken the notes, then, you know, go through, um, make sure that you don't skip any sections, um, make sure your active directory is, is on point, and then, you know, you should be good to go. There's no other real way of knowing other than just uh, just go for it. I mean, I don't, you know, if you fail once, it's not the end of the world. I mean, I failed my OSCP first time around, and then second time around, I cleared it in like four hours. So it's like from failure to you know smashing it. It happens, and uh, taking exams is kind of a skill as well. So you get a little bit of that when you um, you know when you uh, when you take it. So what else do we have? Do, 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 do. Oh, what are the popular Google dorking techniques for bug bounty? Actually, I don't know. I don't do Google dorking that um, that often. Sorry, let me just pop my phone on silent. I've got Formula One notifications coming in. It's a race coming up this weekend, which I'm excited to watch. Um, you know, I don't know if somebody in the chat knows like a good repository of Google Docs um, for for bug bounty, then then definitely share. But 
off the top of my head. Yes, it's not something I have in my like recon process. So I'm a bit lazy on that front. I don't do as much like OSINT as I should, basically. Um, why did you change your payment structure from per class to monthly? I mean, I can't tell you exactly because the choice is obviously Every, the business side stuff sits with Heath. Um, I'm sure he didn't make the decision lightly because he doesn't make decisions like that lightly. Um, I suspect it's to do with like cash flow and, and things like this because um, you know, selling courses, obviously, it can be like uh, quite up and down and uh, it's hard to run a business with uncertainty. So that's my assumption, but don't, you know, don't take me I don't know like the business side, right? So I'm not a, a, a business person. I just... I just break websites, <laughs> but I mean, definitely that there, there was obviously definitely a good reason for it because, um, you know, obviously it wasn't going to be popular with everybody. Um, and we don't do things that upset people lightly, if that makes sense. Obviously for some people, it really works, works nicely. I mean, before I joined TCM, I had the all access pass anyway. So I was kind of like using that model, but, um, not everybody likes that model. I get that. So, hmm. And here's a good, um, yeah, we can focus on releasing contents as well. Oh, yeah, and also updating contents as well. So if we have that, like, subscription model, we can focus on content that, you know, um, people are using rather than having to, like, release lots of extra courses. We can improve and expand the courses we have. So it's a good balance, I think, for sure. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. If you if you look on LinkedIn, he's probably posted about it for sure. Um as a new graduate in cybersec, but with no professional cybersecurity experience, which thinks the best entry level job to grow? Oh, yeah, good question. Um, I mean, being an analyst is good because you get to touch lots, lots of different areas. But what I would say is, it's not actually the job that counts; it's who you're working for and, and it's like who you're like the team that you're part of. Because I've worked in jobs where I've learned tons and tons of stuff and I've had really great people to work with and my knowledge has like, you know, increased dramatically. And then I've had other jobs where I probably spent a year just like chilling, not really, you know, not really learning anything and uh, not developing. So I would say join a company that has a learning culture and also make sure you meet the manager and if they're, that they're you know, they should support your learning and development, not just, you know throw tickets at you all day, if that makes sense. So I would worry less about the job and more about where where the job is, if that makes sense, um, or what the company is, you know. Um, yeah, I think this is um, this is a fair point. If you've taken the course and you've you know you've worked through the through the course, then you're probably ready for the exam because that's how it's designed. It's designed, you know, do the OSINT course, do the PEH, optionally do the others as well, and um, and you should be ready to go. That's the whole point, right? Is um, is that it's not trying to trick you, it's not trying to um, you know throw you off or or whatever, for example. All right, so I'm I'm about five minutes behind on the chat, so I'll just I'll keep going. So if I haven't, if you've asked your question in the last few minutes, I'll I'll get to it. I promise. Um, do, 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 do. Nope, I don't think so. I have like <laughs> my bug hunting profile is like tiny. I think how many bugs have I found through bug bounty? Probably less than ten, because I don't spend much time doing bug bounty to be honest. Um, and I've had a bunch of jobs as web app pen testing, AppSec engineering, uh, and things like this. So I think it's probably becoming more popular, um, but it's not it's not necessary in my opinion uh, at all. And a lot of the really great pen testers I know, you know, don't touch bug bounty at all. So um, and some of them obviously uh, spend a lot of time doing bug bounty. So it's personal preference. If you want to do it, do it, but don't feel like you have to for sure. Um, get into the habit of doing hands-on stuff. Um, try and study a bit every day if you can, and then you should be should be all good. Try and follow like a path on like try hack me or or do a course. Those are the things that will um, that will really uh, you know help in the long run. 
I shaved. I kind of shaved. I trimmed. <laughs> yeah, I I found the charger for my um my thing. I I'd lost it for a little while, for like a month, and uh, I had a haircut too. So um, so hopefully I look a little bit younger. But we won't go into the age conversation because I got into trouble last time <laughs> when we started talking about people's ages. Hey, what's up, Andrew? Better late than never. All good. No, 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 I didn't say this. I said I was dropping a video on YouTube, not, not a course. Um, but the course is is in the works for sure. So, um, but not not in the next week. No, I need sleep. <laughs> I don't work quite that fast, unfortunately. If I could get it out to you next week, I would. But, um, but yeah, I still feel, uh, you know, still got some stuff to do. Um, do, 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 do. Let me keep scrolling down. How can I be on the show with you? Just, just join anytime you want, Joe. <laughs> I'm gonna ping you this week, like maybe tomorrow, because I've got some free time tomorrow, and we'll do, um, we'll plan a stream for next week. So you head it here first, everybody. Me and Joe next week. Um, you can ask him anything about red teaming, about pen testing, about flying about C2, um, all that good stuff. So um, so we'll do that for sure. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, this is a really interesting question, actually. Um, so I just like, you know, knock the microphone. Um, hopefully it's still working. Can you still hear me? Has it died? No, it's still, it should be okay. Um, how can we make our own methodology? Uh, I would say start with like following somebody else's methodology and then adapt it over time. And that's kind of what I did. Like, so I started with like the OWASP checklist a long time ago, some early version of it. And then um, I moved like more authorization authentication attacks like earlier and kind of expanded on that because those are the things that I like to test for. And then added more stuff to do with APIs and just added things into my own checklist uh, as I as I went. So yeah, I mean, start with like, you know, um, some open source um, uh, checklists or, or using the OWASP tool or something like this, and then and then just modify it as you go, in my opinion. Uh, and that that seems to work. And every time you see an awesome talk by somebody like at DEF CON or something, you can then update your notes, update your methodology and, and, and keep going. I'd say my methodology isn't like super clear cut. It's kind of like more of a, like a high level roadmap, um, and that keeps me that keeps me on track enough, I think. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, if you could only get one web app pen testing set, dealer's choice, I suppose, because uh, I would say it's between. Mm, I go for the burp suite one, I think because even though it's not super popular yet, I think it's kind of like gaining traction. And to be honest, yeah, what about pen test sets? There aren't really many like that are really famous. It's not like you have, you know, the big players like in the pen test world. So, yeah. Um, ooh, MS Doc Dump. So uh, I can't remember who it was. Whoever was asking about the um, Google Docs earlier, check out the... Um, Google docking tool called MS Doc Dump. That's probably a good. Um, it's probably good. Um, best advice for somebody entirely outside of the industry who wants to move into cybersecurity. Uh, so, let, all right, let's come up to. Ooh, my keyboard's died. No, we're good. It's just the Bluetooth was still connecting. So, if you come to like the Cyber Mental YouTube channel, right, and. Um, I'm just going to load this up uh, so that you can see. And then I'm going to have to sit and accept all the cookies and all of the tracking. Oh, yeah. Scroll down. Accept all. Wait for YouTube to load after like 20 minutes. And then Cyber Mentor. So if you want to get into pen testing, then ethical hacking in 15 hours 2023 is good. So this is like, um, 
if you want to get into like pen testing, then this is a good hands-on thing. And then also how to be an ethical hacker in 2023. There's also a blog post on the site as well. This is probably like a good path for you to follow. There'll be a bunch of things on here and it's like, do this, do this, do this, do this. And then you should be, uh, you should be in a good stead to, um, to kind of like continue your journey in, if that makes sense. So, um, I thought Shodan always had a, some kind of paywall. Maybe it's just the enterprise edition I'm thinking of. I don't use Shodan that often, so maybe, possibly. I'm not sure what the uh, recent things are with Shodan. Um, is there any complete course for, I mean, Hack the Box has its CBBT, CBBH. Certified Bug Bounty Hunter certification. The course is quite good. I've looked through the materials, um, kind of like halfway through. Um, so I would say that that's a good place to start if you want to learn. Um, bug Bounty has a lot of good stuff in there. So this is a pretty, um, pretty good course. Um, it's an idle video coming. Idle. I, yeah, I did a video on um, broken objects level authorization, which, you know, is idle basically, but um, uh, hold on, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here you go. So, so Bola is the same as idle, except it's just like for APIs. Um, so you can check out this video. It's one of my old ones, so it's five months ago. So apologies if the mic is terrible. Um, but yeah, I'll do I'll do an updated one uh, at some point, especially since I find idle quite a lot on all the time. I mean, idle is so common. So um, let me keep scrolling down. So a few more minutes of questions, and then we'll jump into the box today, because we need to get a move on with it, because I think it's going to take us a while. Um, oh, there's a yeah, bug bounty dorks linked in the chat. Um, uh, for internships, I mean, I don't know if there's a Somebody will be able to tell you like where there's a good list of internships. Um, it depends where you are, I suppose, and and who you know. Um, I think if you can get to like conferences and stuff or like recruitment shows and things like that, that's probably a good place to go for um, for stuff like that. People like to meet you, of course. Um, but yeah, have a look. I don't know Google. If I was if I was trying to find an internship, how would I go about it? I'd probably reach out to people that I knew or like try and contact people directly and just, you know, and just ask, to be honest, given the personal touch is a, yeah, is a good way to go. Um, this is a controversial question. How good of a hacker does one need to be uh, for a role as a pen tester? I mean, hacking and pen testing, are not exactly the same thing. Um, uh, it kind of depends, like, depends on whose, you know, uh, definitions you're going by. You definitely need hands-on practical skills. But, you know, a lot of hacking is, for example, phishing and social engineering um, or or using just, you know, malware that you've bought from from some from some underground forum and, and things like this. And that that is hacking, right? So, you know, guessing passwords is hacking. Pen testing is a bit different because you're assessing a system, you're finding vulnerabilities, you're understanding the impact of what you're doing. You're not destroying your, um, your client's infrastructure. You've got to write a meaningful report at the end. So, you know, I think like pen testers require a lot more than just hacking skills, if that makes sense. Um, but uh, again, it kind of like depends on your definition as a, as what is a hacker. So, yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, exactly. This is this is totally true. And I started off as a dev as well. I wasn't a dev for very long because I probably wasn't a very good dev <laughs> um, um, with my spaghetti code. Um, there's no set path. You're right, 100%. Um, but, you know, if you follow, like, if you can, following some advice of the people who've come before you can can help you, you know, save some time and things like that. But there's no 100% set path for sure. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, CV hunting over bug bounty. Yeah, I think CVs are quite highly regarded. I think we talked about this before, like, 
probably the best way to get into CVE hunting, uh, at least from a web perspective. Just spin up WordPress, download all the plugins you can find, and you'll find vulnerabilities in, you know, slightly less popular WordPress plugins. Have them as CVEs, and I think that's uh, that's a good way to get your first CV. And then obviously, if you find a CV in like, you know, um, some famous open source software that's used a lot, then obviously that's going to get a lot of traction as well. So, so yeah, I think so. This is this is quite good. What's the difference between bug bounty and CV? <laughs> I mean, not that much. I, it's, so CVs are like um, in commercial software. So like if you find a bug in Jenkins, for example, you can um, have that as a CV. Or if you find a uh, an issue in, in, in Windows, or if you find an issue in you know a commercial product that's used by lots of people, or like swagger or um or something like this that's like uh, a cv whereas um bug bounty is just on a single like custom target right so if you find a finding on a single target it doesn't impact anybody else apart from that one company so bug bounty hunting is more like you know pre-release pen testing so you're pen testing something before you release it although it's already been released but you know it's more like that um and cv is a little bit more like research on some hardened uh, system that's being used, you know, massively across, you know, maybe lots and lots of companies' infrastructure. So at least in my understanding, I could be a little bit wrong, but that's my understanding of like CVs versus uh, versus bug hunting. Um, do, 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 do. Actually, I think we might be doing this today. I'm not 100% sure on what the um, the entry point for our box is today, which reminds me we need to start soon. Um, but I suspect we'll pop a shell um, from for if we get a file upload. Um, a lot of web exports of file uploads. So, all right. Um, yes. Yeah, so I can see I'm ten minutes behind. So if you asked your question in the last ten minutes, apologies. I'm going to skip past that. I'm going to come down to the bottom of the chat. Give me a few more minutes. Let's let's start the CTF. And I'll try and cycle back around to um, to questions. And obviously, we've got some we've got some people in the chat who can also uh, answer some questions as well. Lots of experienced people uh, chilling in here. So let's go. Oh no, let's let's do the VPN first, uh, and let's set up the box. I think we're doing Volnet's end game. Is it bad that I've still not seen the end game film? Um what the end game Marvel film. Everyone said it was really good. But uh but I'm yet to uh yet to see it. I did go and see Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and that was like an emotional roller coaster. I was <laughs> being one minute it was funny, the next minute it was super dark, and then it was a bit awkward, and then it was funny again, and wow. Yeah, I didn't know how to feel after that. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, uh, books wise, yeah, there's um, Web Application Hacker's Handbook, and there's another really good one, which I always forget the name. I'm going to have to find it. Um, what is it called? Is it like the Pentest Playbook? Not the little field manual one, but the other one. Pentest playbook to oh yeah, the hacker playbook. I quite liked this. Um, it's been years since I read it, um, but this was quite a good, um, interesting, practical book. Uh, and then, of course, uh, web application. Because handbook, and a lot of people say, "Oh, this is a really old book," and you know, and whatever. But honestly, I, as fast as technology changes, a lot of things don't change, <laughs> and a lot of the methodologies and the approaches that you use that you learn from these um, slightly older books are things that we still do, and you know, thought processes we still go through. Some stuff changes, but a lot of stuff is still still the same. So. All right, let me ping this box and see whether it's open. Looks like we're good. Uh, let's just do mmap-a and then output normal 
and we'll just call it scan.initial. And do, 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 do. <laughs> we're describing you, Andrew, like, uh, you know, an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> One minute, uh, you know, funny, the next minute, super dark, the next minute, something else. And it uh, looks like we've just got 80 and 22 open. Um, so let's just, yeah, let's just take a look. Um, it was tagged as web, so, you know, I don't think we need to scan too deeply. Uh, our services are only accessible through the volnet uh, .thm domain. So I'm just going to copy this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to my hosts file so that when we go to volnet.thm, it resolves to this IP address. And so sudo vin etc hosts. And then you can see this is from my cause video before. And so let me grab the IP address. And then let's go to http colon slash slash volnet.tryhackme. And we get a website, which is quite nice. So, so this is good. And let's grab this and let's do some FFUF in the background. So one, I want to do dash u like this and just I'm just going to do some, like a small word list. I'm going to fuzz this, user share word list stub. And is there a small one? Yeah. And then also what I want to do is I'm going to check for subdomains as well. So, well, that was fast. Um, I can never remember how to do subdomains in FFUF. It's like dash tap capital H and then you can fuzz, but um, I'm just going to come to, oh, I didn't have it. Ah. It's still not popular enough. It's not coming up in my search. What if I go to appsecexplained.gitbook.io and then we come down to content discovery which I'm still working on, documenting all of this, and subdomains. This is what I want. And then we have my fuff command here. So I say mine, it's like, you know, obviously anybody can use FFUF. I've... OK, so user share word lists. Let's just go with deb again, and we'll just go with common. And then we want to. Volnet.thm. So this is going to target this IP address. And what it's going to do, it's going to add this header into the HTTP request, which uh, you can't see because my camera is in the way. Um, so it's going to add this host header. And obviously, we've got this keyword fuzz here. So it's going to go through the list of words. And it's going to say, hey, like, hello.volnet.tryhackme goodbye.volnet.tryhackme, admin.volnet.tryhackme, blog.volnet.tryhackme, um, dashboard.volnet.tryhackme, and all of these common things. And we're actually, we usually get a um, like a common response uh, from, from subdomains. So we also will need to filter the size, but we don't know what the size is yet. So if I run this for a few seconds, and that didn't work, do we need to do it like this? Like this. Oh, no, we actually need, um, I think we need the IP, but I think we need HTTP colon slash slash. Otherwise, it gets confused, I think. Yeah, like this. And then we can filter the size of 65, so dash fs 65. And then we can enumerate uh, subdomains. So it looks like we've got a few. We've got a 307 on this one. API, blog, blog, and shop. And so there are a few subdomains that, that exist. So this is like basic subdomain enumeration. There are obviously tools that you can use in Bug Bounty, like Sublister. Uh, is it crt.it? crt.io? I can't remember. I always forget what it is. I've got it in my notes somewhere. Um, I'm also just going to pull up 
Burp Suite as well, so we can start recording some of our traffic and then review it if we need to. So, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. gosh, my PC is slow today. I don't know why. Oh, my VM is slow for some reason. It's got loads of resources. Oh, I'm I'm re actually really bad at like um, set. I do use orc and cuts quite a lot, um, but you, you know what I do is like if you cat like something like this instead of like um, using orc, sometimes I'm like cut dash d like whatever your delimiter is like this, and then I just cut it again <laughs> like this, and then we'll cut it by like the, the comma. And then I just pipe cuts because I'm really lazy like, like this. So um, yeah, I'll uh, I do have like a, a cheat sheet kicking around in my notes somewhere. So I'll I'll see if I can dig it out at some point. Um, I have a few like uh, common um, cuts and like uh, like if you want to grab a column one of a file or column two or column three, I have some like boilerplate stuff that does that and then you can just tweak it as you need to um but honestly like because i don't do it all the time i always forget like what the um what the commands are so all right um i did not want https it's probably because it's my proxy running on 8081 let's see settings Why is it so small? Proxy options. No, we're running on ATAT. -AT. Why am I getting this error? That's weird. Just going to close Firefox and reopen it. Why is it trying to go to 443? I didn't ask for that. Very strange. Not sure what's going on here. Oops, proxy. Oh, am I getting forwarded somehow? Oh, there's a. Don't know what that is. Where's my response? Not getting any response from these. Very strange. All right, so we'll just switch off the proxy for now. And it works without the proxy. Very strange. I'm not sure what's happened with my um, with my BEP suite, but um, that's OK. We can instead use the network tools in um, in here so but to begin with what i want to look at actually is we found these endpoints so we're just going to try blog shop and admin one so let me come to this and let's see we have blog and i'm actually gonna just bring up mouse pad uh no i don't want to restore data so blog admin one and shop so that didn't work let's try admin one. Oh no you know what we need to do before we can access them is we need to add them into our etc pass to be uh, not pass to bd uh etc hosts file because when we type in the address it's not going to find it's not going to resolve it so if we sudo vim etc hosts like this we can add our subdomains here. So we want blog .thm, and then we want admin one dot .thm, and then we want shop dot .thm, like this. So now it resolves. Okay, so we get this volnet management panel is up, which looks like we're going to have to fuzz to find out where this is. And then we've got blog, 
So it looks like there's some stuff in here. And we have shop as well. Gosh, there's a lot to look at <laughs> like for this. So I'm not sure whether we um, uh, whether we'll find uh, find this today. Yeah, it's probably a cache issue, or I don't know. Bub Suite's being a bit strange today, but it's okay. We can work without Bub Suites. You know, it's all all good. Um, I'll troubleshoot it later. Like I don't spend ages just like figuring out. It won't be a Bub Suite certs because I, I definitely already have it in uh, installed because I use it like basically every day. So. So it should be all good. And this VM hasn't been rolled back in like two years. So um, let's fuzz this admin one and see what we can find here. And then if we find like a login panel or like some kind of, you know, something that we need to do, then um, that will give us an idea of where to go next. So let's, do we want to do it here? Yeah, let's do it there instead of the slash en, and then user share wordlists uh, common txt. Let's just see what this comes back with quickly. Shouldn't take too long. We've got this file admin typo three conf temp. So typo three must be some software or some like something uh, that's running. So let's just check this ah uh, yeah so when you're doing ctfs like you get hints like this we can see this like user upload directory so we might be able to get a file up to here it looks like we can't see the temp directory but that's okay uh, let's try this extension we've got this sites main Ooh, a config file Let's just save this for now. What is it called? Config.yaml. Why can't I see it? Uh, base admin one. Nothing too exciting in there. I do want to add. Uh, do I want to add these into my notes? I probably should. Let's just finish going through them first, though. We could also scan recursively, but I'll only do that if we kind of get to a, like a dead end. That's hanging. Aha, typo three. More about typo three. Uh, this is just like a login copyright. So if you can't find the um, version of some software, sometimes the copyright will be like, oh, until 2017, like, you know, 2005 till 2017. And you know that it's probably the version that was released in 2017. So kind of like a, sometimes you can get a little bit of insight into the version of something. We'll just, oh yeah, typo three. This is a legit like CMS. I don't think I've seen this before. I don't recall it, but. Yeah, interesting. Let's try admin admin. Let's try admin or oh, one equals one like this. This doesn't really matter if we have a password or not because we're like terminating the rest of the SQL data or the SQL query. Doesn't look like that works. That's okay. Excuse me. I'm just like choking. And then we have vendor as well. So let's just come to here. Oh, we get this login provider in the URL as well. So this might be something useful to fuzz, or maybe we can get something, some peculiar behavior outside of uh, with the application with that as well. God, there's a lot of stuff here to look at. Okay. Oops. Phone. Nets.thm slash. 
Yeah, if I was doing this as like a, as a pen test or a bug bounty, I would probably be spending a lot of time like mapping out what's here, trying to go through it all, and, and things like this. There's definitely quite a lot of things to um, uh, to look into. But uh, hmm, what do we want to do next? Um, do you want to carry on looking at typo three? Let's have a quick look to see whether we have like there's some stuff. I'm just seeing whether there's like a login bypass or something. Otherwise, we'll have a look at shop and the other subdomain as well, uh, whatever it was. Uh, looks like there's file inclusion. Let's just examine this quickly. Let's see if we can get to this. So it's slash typo three. No, it's not found. Okay. Maybe nothing. There's some extensions with SQL injection, but we're not really sure what extensions or what's going on with it at the moment. So um, let's take a look at this. And have a quick look at the posts. Ooh, quickly, if we click on, oh, this goes to post.html. There's the author. This could be a potential username, so I'm just going to. Note that down. Sal as well. I don't see any parameter coming in here, so let's take a look, see what's happening under the hood. We'd usually do this in um, Burp Suite, but there's some Twitter stuff happening. Get updates. There's an API call here, which we did find on looking at this because we found, uh, oh, did we find API dot? I'm sure I saw it in the results somewhere when we were fuzzing. Maybe. So let's come back. Have a quick look at this. Okay, so we got, yeah, I need to add API. Maybe I forgot to uh, add this earlier. So pseudonym etc hosts, add this, get rid of the HTTPS. Yeah, it looks like we get it's Telegram. This is kind of like, hmm, okay. Can we fuzz this or can we get something crazy going with here? So can we try like dot slash dot slash dot slash? It's probably not going to be file inclusion because we're getting JSON back and there's like different data coming back. So I suspect this is more like uh, a database call, but let's just try this quickly. Mm, 
No, it doesn't look like it. But what we can do, if I remember what we did before, let's, how do we copy the request? Request. Oh yeah, we can copy this curl, I think, like this. So if you have curl, right, what you can do is you can replace curl with SQL map, I think. And then do you just press enter? Does that work? Yes, that's a cool trick. Right, so if you didn't know, copy any request as curl and SQL map uses the same formats or the and the exact same flags as curl does. So you can then just replace the um, binary or the, this keyword from curl to SQL map and it will do the attack. So what I used to do is I used to save the request into like request.txt and do like SQL map dash r request.txt. But if you can copy as curl, then you're you're good to go. So let's see if this, uh, I was going to fuzz this in burp suite, but then realized burp suite wasn't working properly. So um, so we'll give this a second to uh, to run. So, so all good. While it's doing that, um, I will catch up on the chat. So yeah, this is um, this will be on YouTube on the live tab. So if you're just on the Cyber Mentor, just go to live. You can see all of our previous um, all our previous things. So it should be good to go. Oh, yeah, you've people already replied in the chat. So all good. Thanks for that. Um, oh, it looks like blog is vulnerable. Do you want to keep testing others? Nope. And yeah, it looks like we've found injections. So let's do, uh, if we do dash dash databases, it should give us, oh no, it should tell us the databases, right? Can't remember. Okay, so we can do that, yeah. So I want to see all the tables, basically. Um, so yeah, it's giving us the databases here anyway. So we've got a few different ones. This is like all of the default tables. So we've got a database called blog. And I'm actually just going to copy this. So we're just going to put SQL i. And then we've got oh, VN admin, which sounds exciting as well. And then snip tables. So it looks like there's a users thing in here, users table in here. And what we can do is we can, let's say, if we want to grab the data from BE users, uh, we can just do something like dash d vn admin uh, dash t is uh, what was it the users and then we can either enumerate the columns like this or we can just dump the data so let's have a quick look at the columns first it's quite a lot of columns I'm kind of glad and we've got this admin so this is probably like a small int so like a zero or a one but what I actually want to see is, let's see, usernames. There's a password field. Let's start with that. So what we'll do is we'll do, is it dash C? And then username, password, dash, dash, dump, like this. And we only get one user. Interesting. OK, so we can grab this. It's an argon password. Bloody hell. <laughs> it's going to take like 5 million years to crack. So um, this takes forever. Um, so I wouldn't run Rocky against this, um, which makes me think that maybe we need to. I mean, it could be like in the top of Rocky, but yeah. Not as exciting as I thought. I, as soon as I see Argon, I'm like, no point, no point cracking it. Um, although that's probably not the right approach. But um, let's see what's in here, because we have a users table in here as well. 
So let's go uh, dash t blog and dash t users. And let's have a look at the columns in there. It's got ID, username, and password. OK, so we can just do dash dash dump. And we've got passwords and usernames. But these look like clear text passwords, which is a bit strange. I wonder if Chris is in this list. Can't see it. Because I suspect what's happening is is this um, VN admin, this is probably for the um, type three login. Possibly. Let's just try one of these quickly to see whether this. Uh, Oh, sorry, it's type 03, not type 3. I think, was it passwords on the left or usernames on the left? I can't remember. Let's, uh, so you've got the passwords on the left. OK, so I did it the wrong way around. OK, so this is the password. Let's paste this in here. And this is the username. Let's paste this in here. Ah, uh, everybody in the chat. Yeah, DBS. OK, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. That's how you do it. I can never remember the SQL map syntax. It's always like, I mean, I can usually like vaguely remember, but, uh, but it's all good. Um, OK, what do we want to do now? Was there a login here somewhere? Let's fuzz this and see whether we can find a login for this. So I'm just going to open a new tab. FFUF dash U slash fuzz. And then. Word list user share word lists dub common and then let's also add HTML because I saw that on the end of some pages. So while that's running, I wonder if it's giving us a bunch of clear text passwords. And it's given a short list. So I wonder if our password for the Argon user, the Argon encrypted user, is in here. Ah, this is trimmed as well. So if the username is in here, I wouldn't have seen it. So let's do, I overlooked that. And that's a bit of a mistake on my part. So let's grab this. And then let's cat this. And then let's grab Chris. Oh, we didn't find him. I was really excited for a second there. I thought, ah, oh, he's definitely in that end. Um, um, let's try. Um, do we want to? Yeah, OK. Let's do an orc, <laughs> as requested. Um, I'm going to see whether the password is in this list. And then what we want to do is, um, so our delimiter is a comma, and then we want to print. And do we need a space in orc? I can't remember. Is it print dollar one or is it print? Let's see. Yeah, that's it. OK. Um, so printing the second column, which I think, if I recall, is the password column. Yeah, it is password. Let's put this to passwords.txt. And then let's grab this and see whether we can crack this using that list. And 
if it is, it's just kind of like CTF, I think. Uh, CEO John hash, whoops, John hash, dash dash word list equals passwords.txt. And it looks like it doesn't need us to tell it what hash it is. So that's good because, well, the start of modern hashes usually tell you because they're like, hey, look, it's like dollar sign whatever, or it's like dollar sign two y for bcrypt or you know uh, different things. So I'm gonna see how the progress is. See how long this is actually gonna take. It can't even give me an update, so that's that's how long it's gonna take. It's gonna take forever. While that's running, let's have a quick look in the chat. Oh, typo three default creds. Yeah, that's a probably a good uh, a good thing. Typo three default credentials. Uh, so, ah, uh, password defined during the installation progress, but that's probably, that could be a more recent version. So let's see. Default username is admin, the default password is password. Yeah, we didn't try that. We did try admin admin. So let's try admin um, password. Verifying login data. Let's see if this works. No, unfortunately not. Although that was a good shout because uh, because I'd uh, I'd forgotten to test that, and that's always a good thing to test. Yeah, twenty nine percent. See, like if we were running Rocky, this would take. Oh, <laughs> it actually found something. Uh, if this were if this was to run through Rocky with like the ten or 11, 14 million passwords in Rocky, I can't remember exactly how. I think it's like fourteen point five million. That would take. I don't know, a very long time. So um, let's try this. Uh, let's paste this, Chris underscore W. This could also be for somewhere else, but let's see if it works here. Oh, if you want the link for my uh, app, psychexplained.gitbook.io, it's still a work in progress. There's still a lot of stuff to um, to add, but this is the um, this is the link if you want to do it. I've been kind of like slowly adding all of my like I don't know thoughts that I get. So like if you come into injection, for example, and you come into SQL injection. I've tried to make checklists that like make you think more like outside the box, for example, rather than just like test this payload, test this payload, test this payload, because that's like you know. You can get payloads from payloads all the things, for example. Um, whereas here, it's like kind of just giving you different different ideas and different things. So hopefully, some people will find it useful. There's still a lot to cover, but, um, but yeah, the link's in the chat if you want it. Um, this is taking forever. Oh, <laughs> it's done. Nice. OK, we're in. Yeah. Um, yeah, no music this week. I uh, didn't have time to set up my um, my music box, so unfortunately, uh, next week though, we'll be back with some beats for sure. Uh, definitely, I think I can actually add some. Let me add some backgrounds. I can add lo-fi because we have lo-fi on on restream. Did that work? What's going on? No, I don't think it worked. So as I say, now is it Chris underscore W at Let's see. No, but you never know. Could work. No, nah, unfortunately not. Good, uh, good shout there. Did the lo-fi music? Oh, my headphones are switched off. 
Oh, there we go. Okay, I can hear some music. If it's too loud, then I'll um, I'll turn it down. But if it's not, then uh, then it's all good. Um... I'm just scrolling down the chat. Let's see. Comment screen hides what you're doing. What? Wait, what? Which, which comment screen? Oh yeah, sometimes. But I don't leave it up there for too long. Sometimes I just it's just nice to highlight people's chat messages. And uh, you know, it makes sense as well, because if you can't see the question or the thing that I'm like talking about, then people are like, what's he talking about? And it's like, ah, this is the this is what I was replying to. So it's all good. Um, but yeah, I probably left it while I was trying to SSH in. But I was just like, all I did was uh this so SSH, I just tried the two usernames. Uh, against the target. So yeah, sorry if it was covered up. All right, so typo CMS 10.3.0. So that's something that we want to um, to check out. So let's add this to our notes here. And search exploit. I think we can just, yeah, it's called typo three. There weren't too many before. I don't recall seeing any particularly high numbers. So we have uh, this 3.5. Remote code execution, local file execution, 4.7. Doesn't look like we have some recent stuff. I do think I recognize this dashboard though. I've definitely seen these icons somewhere before. Let's have a look and see what sites we have. It's probably going to be like WordPress where we can like edit the theme or we can upload our own PHP file into like the template here or something like this. And this is probably how we're going to get code execution. So let's have a little look around. Oh, admin logs can be useful. Although this looks like just me with my login attempts. Yeah. Let's come to file list. You might be able to upload here. Ah, let's try uploading a file. So let me copy user share uh, web shells. PHP uh, let's grab this and then let's just I need my IP address and then then PHP reverse shell get rid of all of this because we don't need that and then put our IP address in here. Let's just do 443 and let's try and upload this. Uh, Kali and ah, file name PHP is not allowed. Okay, so let's try a few different ones. So let's move this to uh, rev.php2, for example. Okay, it looks like that uploaded. Um, hopefully it'll execute. So we're in file admin, which was, if I recall, was it like this? File, oops, fool admin? File admin, like this. And then, do we go into user upload? Rev.php2. Ah, it's, it's coming back as text not executed. Okay, so let's move uh, whoops, rev.php2 to rev.php3. So it'd be a little bit easier in repeater where we can just repeat the request and, and do it, but I'm not going to spend ages on stream troubleshooting web suite. So, ah, three isn't allowed. 
Uh, let's try PHTML. God damn. No, <laughs> let me upload files. Um, okay. Um, is there a, can we rename files? Because sometimes you can upload a file uh, as something, you know, whatever, .jpg, and then you can just rename it. I've seen that a few times in my time. Um, so upload new, refresh. Don't want that. Doesn't look like there's any. Aha, rename. Yes, that's what I want. Dot PHP. Save and close. Ah, oh, see, that's not fair. They know all the tricks. Um, we could try some bypasses. So we don't actually know how it's checking the extension here. There's a few other things we could check. We could check for null bytes. Um, we could check for uh, if they've got a weird HT access file. Sometimes you can do like .php .jpg if it's grepping for. The HT access is grepping for PHP, but not necessarily at the end with the weak regex. Um, magic bytes, potentially. So many things we can try. I wonder if we can... Let me scroll back down. Do I have the burp CA? Of course I have the burp CA certificate imported. Come on. It's not my first rodeo, yo. <laughs> uh, um, no bites. Let's try no bites, just just for fun. Um, if it works, I'll be very impressed because I haven't seen no bite working in a long time. Oh no, that's not how you do it. You do, yeah, like this, for example. Whoops. To rev.php. And then we terminate that, and then we do like .jpg or something like this. It uploaded, and let's see if it actually executes. So, uh, whoops. No, unfortunately not found. With that it's not found though, it should still find it. Ah, uh, yeah, look at that. It's changed the percentage to an underscore. Oops, so let me come back here, change this. Yeah, look at that, it's, it's filtered. Okay, um, what else can we try? I wonder if there's a way of changing... Are we the admin? Let's see. We might be able to upload a malicious extension, so we'll keep that in the back pocket um, because we might be able to just Google for like typo3 reverse shell extension. Looks like there's a lot in here as well already. So I think we're in for a long one uh, trying to figure this out. Backend users, just this one. So I'm going to assume they're an admin. Yeah, their ID is one as well. Reports, DP check, configuration. Nothing too exciting in here. I wonder if we can maybe get code execution through the error logs. Hmm. What about the settings? Extension configuration. We'll leave the extensions for now, but we might have to circle back to this. Still password, manage system users. I presume this is just users within, yeah, within the web application, not like it's not connected to the underlying host. Configuration presets, feature toggles. 
installation wide options. Let's have a quick look at the features. Hit count. Security. It doesn't look very exciting. Let's close this. Uh, configuration. Oh, image handling settings. What is it doing with image magic? I can't remember what that binary does off the top of my head. Does it just extract like metadata and stuff? Don't know. Maybe we can change this to something else and then get code execution through the image processing. I think we'd have to do some research and figure out, find a blog post on on um, on this what's been done. Backend. User upload directory. I wonder if we can allow or change the images that we can upload. Sorry if this is a little boring to watch. Um, I'm just skimming through to see if we can find some like lower hanging fruits on getting code execution. Otherwise, it's, we're going to go to Google. But I do like to go through things manually first. Like I like to have a pass because then I kind of understand what's going on and what's available and what's not available, rather than just Googling and like getting stuck in rabbit holes. I think checking first and reading is definitely a way a good way to avoid rabbit holes for sure and especially with ctfs usually the answer kind of jumps out you as soon as you see it so uh, i wonder if we can search for upload there's the directory oh there's file deny pattern <laughs> Okay, I mean, hopefully we can change this, but yeah, it looks like it's denying PHP 3 to 8. PHP 2 isn't executed. Is PHP an official executable file? I'm not sure. And then we've got PHP SH, PHTML. Let's remove PHTML. Write this. Looks like that works. I did something similar before on, I think it's like OS Aussie ticket system or something found that on a pen test once and, and did a similar thing where you just change the configuration and then you could upload files um where are my file list what did we move so let's move this whoops to rev.phtml choose this aha yes it uploaded Nice. All right. So netcat nlvp four four three rev dot html and we get a reverse shell. Whoops! <laughs> I just knocked. Sorry if I um I don't know smashed the mic and uh, for you people wearing headphones. Um, nice. Yeah, that that worked. That worked well. I mean, just using you know, the, the configuration. So um, what's the host name, Volna Endgame? All right, get into a proper shell. And now we can chill. And as a web person, my job's done. No, I'm joking. We'll, we'll we'll go a little bit further, and um, we can't just we can't just stop as um, dub 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 data, unfortunately. But we can take a breather, so um, so all good. Let me catch up with the chat. I can see that actually lots of people are uh... <laughs> cat walked on keyboard. This is this is a daily problem for me. So I I feel you for sure. Execute order 66. God, I'm missing all the jokes. I wish I was like, can somebody else stream and I'll just chill in the chat and, um, you know, and talk about like pop culture stuff. That, that would be fun. Get a stable shell now. I mean, nah, I'm all about the sketchy web shells. Um, I mean, I could do the, 
the background, the X term. I always forget how to do it, but it's just I'm I'm fine as we are. I like the uh, I like to live dangerously, and because we've got like file upload, we can just repop the shell anytime. That's my excuse for laziness, anyway. Um, let's come into dub dub dub, and let's do. Uh, let's grab this. And what do I want to do? Actually, let's. I mean, should we have a quick look around first? Um, let's have a quick, like, manual look around before we before we run limpies. Uh, so we've got roots up here. I don't see any users. Ah, system is a user because you can tell from the ID is a thousand. There's loads of stuff in here that I don't really recognize, to be honest. So some of these might be our, our privesque. Um, so let's have a look in home. And I presume we're going to see system. Yeah, we do. And do we have tree? Ah, we don't have tree. Um, Oh, we've got the flag there. I need the flag because oh, we don't have it. <laughs> denied. I need I need the points for my top one percent because I'm still in the top two. Uh, we might have some cached credentials here. Pseudo as admin successful, but the file size is zero. These are probably all empty because they're all like the same size and we already checked one. Sometimes like, is, is it really worth checking bash RC? Sometimes you can find weird stuff in there, but most of the time it's just like the standard bash RC file unless they've added something random and custom at the bottom. Um, if you want to be mean, then you can add alias equals, you know, alias CD equals pseudo RMRF for the next person. But that's a bit mean. Um, where is the web server? Uh, dub, 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 HTML. Let's see what's in here. And let's see if there's a config file. Uh, Composer JSON log file admin index. I don't see one. Um, didn't see this sys ext folder. Maybe we're going down a rabbit hole. I don't see anything obvious here. Um, what does PHP stand on Neon? No, I, I don't think I've ever seen this file, file before. I'm just going to run it with strings so I don't destroy my machine just in case. Or we'll destroy my terminal if there's like non printable characters. I've done that plenty of times. Huh. Okay. Um, all right. So. Uh, let's just check opt quickly. What is that? Uh, VirtualBox guest editions. Uh, probably not part of the CTF, so we'll just ignore that. Um, yeah, OK. Let's see. This looks suspicious. Uh, whoops. Dot Mozilla. I can't remember how to extract secrets from, like, cached stuff in Firefox, but maybe we'll figure it out. Cats profiles .ini. Yeah, there's some stuff in here. So let's have a look. Uh, let's go into this top one. And then I think there's a file somewhere.
God, it's been a long time since I've done this. Protections? Isn't there a file that stores like encrypted stuff? Don't remember. Um, okay, let's let's Google. Uh, so let's do Firefox. Uh, if I can type. Let's have a quick look at this. Ah, it stores passwords in a file called logins.json. Let's see if we can read that. Aha, so there is some stuff in here. And there's try hack me. Hopefully this isn't the... <laughs> I hope this isn't the box author's um, try hack me password in here. Because that would be quite fun. Uh, so yeah, we have the encrypted username, which is this by the looks of it. It looks like it's in base64 and then maybe it's encrypted afterwards. And then we have this encrypted password and then some GUID and some other stuff. Okay, so I think there's a tool we can use to decrypt this. So I've seen this once or twice before. Uh, Firefox decrypts uh, logins.json. Uh, this looks good. Let's have a look. Oh, <laughs> if your profile, if I run this on my local machine, it's gonna like decrypt the passwords that I have in my local. Um, Thing. So I need to make sure that I pass the folder. So I'm going to try and get it off the machine. Oh, actually, I could probably just download it, upload it to the machine. That probably works. So let's just git clone this. And then cd firefox decrypts. Grab my IP address. And then python 3-m hp.server 80. And then I think we just need to grab this file by the looks of it. So let's try that. So let's come into temp. Uh, w get this slash this. And then Python 3, Firefox. Ah, we get an error. Wonderful. Uh, do we need some other stuff? Is that why? Do we need this? This Tomble file? What's this? Probably not. No, it doesn't look like it. Um, so what we could do instead is let's zip home system dot mozilla oh no we need ah okay we need let's just call this moz dot zip uh home system dot mozilla recursively and then we'll take that down to our local system and then try it there because i can troubleshoot um Python on my local system, install stuff like missing modules and things like this. It's going to be much easier. So let's do python 3-m http.server 80, or we could just move it to cd dub 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 html. Uh, let's just move it here. So move temp moz.zip to here and then we can probably just go to http colon slash slash vuln vulnet.thm moz.zip 
No, it's not found. Damn it. Um, CD typo three. Oh no, there's an index.php here. I think we can move it here. So move dot dot slash mars dot zip to here. Let's see if that finds it. No. Okay. All right. I'm just going to go with my original plan. Uh, uh, dub, 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 HTML. Oh, where am I? Typo. Typo three. Is it dash two? Let's move it back here. Okay. Python three dash m HTTP dot server eighty eighty. The easiest way to do it. And then in here, we're just going to come back to cd this wget. Uh, let me grab the IP of the box. Colon 8080 slash moz.zip. Yeah, and that works. OK. Whew. That was, um, that was, uh, that was effort. <laughs> Took me, uh, took me a while. Ah, oh, yeah, good shout, outstanding. So I wasn't looking at the chat when, uh, when you posted this, but yeah, logins.json is the, uh, is the one to go for. So um, let's unzip this file, uh, moz.zip, and then let's also come into. Oh, is it? It's dot mars, isn't it? LSLH. Oh no, it's home. Okay. Oh yeah, it's kept the directory. Okay, so we need this, if I recall from the um, documentation. And then let's just Python 3, what is it? This. Okay, looks like it's working. Oh no, couldn't initialize. Couldn't find credential files. Okay, uh, is it looking in the right place? So the eight MK one, seven nine. So let's CD into here. Yeah, there's no login file there, but it doesn't have this one, which I think we saw one in there earlier. Okay, so if we vim profiles.ini, maybe add a new profile, or actually let's just edit this one. Hopefully we won't break the profiles file, but we can always re-grab it if we need to. Uh, let's try that. What was it? It was a 2F again. Haha! -ha! We got a password. And I hope. Yeah, so this is at Volnet. So <laughs> this isn't this guy's actual try hack me password, which I was kind of like, mm, is it going to be his password? Is it going to, like, are we going to leak somebody's creds? But if it's on a, if it's on a CTF, it's fair game. It's like that dude who left uh, an interesting browser history. I won't tell you which creator it was, but uh, interesting browser history in his um, in one of his machines, which uh, you know. Um, so this is is this just the same password we got before? I'm gonna be really annoyed if it is. No, it's different. Okay. <laughs> I thought oh, all that effort, we just got the same one. Uh, let's see if this is the password for. Um, the user on the system. Uh, oh gosh, where are we? Uh, oh no. All right, well, instead of, let's see if we can SSH. 
while I mess around with the thing. Hey, okay, we can SSH. Nice. Whew. Time for a time for a quick break. Catch up with you all in the, in the chat. And uh, oh, that was intense. <laughs> I haven't seen the Mozilla thing in uh, in like I don't know maybe two years. Um, could have used, yeah, I think I did this in the end, right? This was the uh, this was probably the easy way of doing it, but you know, it's like sometimes I just try different things, whatever pops into my head, it's all good. Ah, uh, yeah sudo dash l and we have the password as well oh it was a good shout this is uh always something you should try when you um uh when you pop a shell or get a new user account oh um all right what are we doing now back to back to the start uh so do we have limpies on here did i upload limpies no let's um let's grab limpies and uh and we'll see we'll see what happens um so let's come here cd dot dots grab my ip grab this Python 3 dash m hp.server 80 w gets this limpies.sh chmod plus plus x limpies.sh and then let's just run this and then I'm just gonna ssh back in uh, Oh no, that was the IP address I just pasted, not his password. So I'm just going to pop a second shell so that while Limpies is running, we can do a little bit of like manual enumeration. So this looks the same as before, which is not surprising because, oh, we can, right, yes. That's what I wanted, <laughs> the flag. All right, let me let me put this in. Ooh, uh, the administrator password is also a flag as well. So let's grab this, submit, and yeah, we got some points. <laughs> You're on a one-day streak. Thanks, try hack me. Thanks for reminding me that I'm always on a one-day streak. <laughs> um, I did have a good streak going once, but you know. Can't get in here. Uh, I was, I'm not sure what's the SRV for. Nothing exciting there. So far, says temp. Five point four. It's fairly recent. Okay, I think we'll switch over here. See what Limpies has for us. I went way too far up. There we go. Okay. So we've got ping, netcat, that's useful. CV 2021 40 34. I don't think I've tried this CV before. Not sure if there's an exploit available. Maybe we can take a look. And pwn kit, it's not bad. Uh, Baron, same edit too. I think I've seen this. Maybe you've used that before. Not too many kernel exploits, so that makes me think that maybe, maybe it's not a kernel exploit, or at least the intended path. Um, some capability stuff, but that's on root or systemd. Not sure what that is, to be honest. 
Um, got Apache 2. This always comes up. Roots, uh, Apache spins up uh, as root so that it combines to port 80 because you need privileges and then it drops privileges afterwards. Or it does some clever stuff or something. But, um, but yeah, this is common. It's not, Apache's not actually running as root, unfortunately. I've got MySQL running. Okay. Yeah, I always go for suits and goods. It's definitely like the way, right? It's uh What's up, Hacker77? How's it going? Did the bot get a new icon? Look at this. What's this? Oh, it's the Facebook bot. What's, uh... yeah, okay. I, I don't think I've seen the Facebook bot before. It's probably the first time I've spotted it, I think. Yeah. Let's see what else we can find. Yeah, what's up, Facebook viewers? I think we get most of our views off, uh, what's it called, YouTube. And then after that, I think it's LinkedIn. And then I think we get a few views on Facebook. So yeah, hello to all of you. Uh, oh, api.conf. That's not very exciting. Hmm. Nothing jumping out. We might have to go through some manual enumeration. Or we might have to run PSPY. That looks suspicious. This is a binary in our system folder and looks like we have capabilities with it. I can't remember what this is, but we should check that out. I'll go and have a look. I didn't see that utils folder before. Let's go and check that out in a sec. What else have we got? Usually we can just check capabilities on them. Um, what's it called? GTF opens. I think there's a way of doing it in the command line. I can't remember. Interesting column names. Yeah, this is all the stuff that we've seen before. Not very exciting. So the most boring part of the stream is me reading Limpy's output, unfortunately. <laughs> but it has to be done. I find reading Limpy is quite relaxing, to be honest. I don't know why, except when I'm in an exam. Um, OK, there was really not much in there. So let's check out these capabilities. If we can't find that, we'll run PSPY. And then if we don't find anything there, we'll probably try kernel exploits, I think is kind of like the the order of things. Uh, so let's come to our home directory. Oh yeah, yeah, there it is, utils. Yeah, this is a bit suspicious. Um, how do you do capabilities? Is it cap-l? No. Uh, I The next list capabilities. Just give me a command. Let's go on hack tricks. Uh, whoa, what's going on? Why is there? Why is my browser broken? <laughs> uh, no, that's not what I want. Whoa. Whoa, why am I on the Twitch channel? I don't want to be there. 
Oh, get caps. Is that a thing? Oh, we need the process ID though. Uh, I thought there was a way to just list them, but maybe I'm wrong. I can't remember. Um, so it said, Limpy said we had capabilities for open SSL. So let's do a Google on that. As it equals EP. Yeah, this is what I wanted, I think. Oh, it's get cap. Okay. Somebody, a bunch of you have probably said this in the chat. Yeah, there we go. Um, how do you say this name? Gray, gray Jorts? Gray Horts? However you say your name, you are correct, sir. Good, uh, good shout. Uh, so, yeah, we've got this. So we've got this. We might have some others as well. So we can write raw packets, which is always useful with ping. I think that's pretty standard. Um, do, 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 do. Classic example. Let's say tar equals caps to search plus EP, which means tar has read, oh, has read access to anything. Okay, we can abuse this. Okay, so what about the equal? Oh, okay, open SSL. Nice, it's blank. However, unlike when most things blank people think it's nothing, in this case, if you can call it from the right location, like the digital equivalent of the Hamptons, <laughs> then you immediately be entitled to the same privilege level, aka the root de have everything. Okay, so. What is this doing? Inform to in key to. Ah, so it's grabbing this private key. Ah, uh, wait, what? And then outputting it to. No, you're creating a private key and then dropping it into shadow? I don't understand what's going on here. Just bypass this safeguard. Interesting. I'm sure I've seen a simpler way to exploit this before. Open SSL capabilities are definitely, uh, let's go to GTF opens and see what we can find on here. Open SSL, this might take a little bit of time, we'll see. This is the one I've done before, I think. Let's give this a try. Um, so, We can echo data to open SSL, ENC, and overwrite a file. So let's just test this. Uh, echo test. Uh, wait, oops. Uh, cuts. Okay, so it's done that. Uh, but it's created by system, but maybe we can write to a file that we don't have privileges to write to. I think that's what we usually do. So let's, okay, let's, let's copy etc pasta bd. I've seen this exploit before. Um, so cd temp. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy. We did this last week to here. And then we want open SSL dash one pass like this. Uh, how do we do this? Or is it dash L pass? 
How do we generate a password with OpenSSL? Uh, um, dash one. I forgot how to do this last week as well. Oh, yeah, that's it. Pass to BD. Okay. So open SSL is dash one, isn't it? Pass to BD dash one pass like this. Uh, do, do we want it to end in a dot? Yeah. And then we want to cats. Uh, let's head dash n one PTC pass to BD. And then we want this. And let's just drop this in here for a second. What we're going to do is we're going to try and create a new user in a fake etc pastwd file, and then we're going to try and overwrite the pastwd file. So let's uh, vim pastwd. Oh, vi pastwd. Yeah, we like vi and vim. They're the best. No arguing. Oh, what happened here? Oh no, I just broke it. <laughs> Nobody saw that. <laughs> okay, I'm just I'm just gonna echo to uh, like this. Um, okay, so that's there, and then what we want to do is this might not work, but I've seen this done a bunch of times before. So we'll grab this again. And then we'll come back to here. And what we should be able to do is instead of echo, we can just cat past wd and then out this, out that to etc past wd. And if it doesn't work, uh, it doesn't look like it worked. Yeah, that's a shame. Do we have to set up some privileges or do something beforehand before we do it? Hmm, can't really remember. Yeah, try to write SSH key to root. That's probably a good shout as well. Um, hmm. I wonder if... Uh, Let me Google this. I might be doing this wrong. We might have to do something before doing this. Although on GTFO bins, it's like just L file. Although this is in quotes, maybe that matters. Let's try it like this. Oh, it doesn't work. Um, hmm. I'm sure I've done that before on a different box. All right, let's try something else. And let's go back to, um, what's it called? Here. So what do we do? First, we need to read the current etc shadow file. So, all right, so let's grab this. Let's just copy this in temp. Whoops. And we'll just put in the default information and then Let's start server so we can read the root files. Like this. And then on another load priv on the same host. We need the ah, uh, we didn't need this uh but now 
Let's try wget. Oh, we don't need HTTPS. That's probably... I don't know, maybe we do. We're getting like an SSL issue. Uh, dash dash no check certificates. Oh, cannot overwrite shadow success. Okay, let's try this and then let's do dash O to, uh, to test. Huh. What was that actually supposed to do? Aha, I've just figured out why the exploits aren't working. And I'm going to check the chat to see whether somebody's spotted this. So when we're looking at the capabilities, we, um, what did we do? Do, 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 get cap dash R. And so we sent the error to dev null. So you notice the path to this open SSL is different to what's in our current path. So we need to make sure that we use the right binary when we're doing these exploits. So let's try this again with um, hopefully the correct path. So this is in home system utils. And then we need to, oh, let's just do it. Oh no. CD slash temp. Yes, it worked. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. I was like, huh, why didn't that work? I'm sure I've done that before. Um, so if we just do roots to, what did we set the password as? Yes, we're roots. Nice, I like it. Whew. Um, I'm going to quickly see whether that other one worked as well. So CD, let's just grab this flag quickly before I break the box. And I'm going to copy this. And all right, so let's let's exit this. And then let's try this once more with... Um... So this should be okay. And then, yeah, so here we need home system, utils, like this, and then let's try this again. Ooh. Yes, and we can dump the shadow file. So both, both ways worked, and uh, that's quite nice. Although that doesn't look like a shadow file to me. Wait, error opening etc shadow. Huh, maybe that's not correct. I don't know. We did something wrong. But we managed to get roots. So that's the um that's the main thing. And uh it's five past seven now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna finish up, get something to eat. Um whoops. And uh, I might be back on Discord in an hour or so to finish up a few things. Uh, I've got some labs to work on, so but I won't be working too late tonight, I think. I'm going to get some sleep. And um, I will catch all of you people, uh, all of the awesome viewers, next week. So thanks for hanging out, everybody. Much appreciated. It was uh, a little bit of a struggle at the end, but we got there. So that was kind of... Um, Hopefully you found it interesting because sometimes when I'm stuck, I feel like, ah, oh, people must be so bored watching me just struggle. But um, but yeah, it should be all good. And uh, yeah, have a great rest of the week, everybody. And catch you all next time. Thanks, everyone.